and the Saga is back, baby. Yeah. Thorfinn doesn't even need weapons. Like, Eivor is going to pull out the sword and stuff. And, and like, Thorfinn's going to hit him with the old 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. He's going to do the, the elbow destruction. Like, bam, bam, bam. He's going to, like, pow, 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 pow. Hey there, guys. And welcome to the Vinland Saga Manga Review. I'm so glad to be back. We got an amazing chapter this week. Um, what can I say? I'm really eager to talk about it. Uh, I think we're back into the good old days. Guess who's back, 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 back again? Torfin is serious. Serious Torfin is back. Serious, motivated, dedicated Torfin. Um. He returned in this chapter. <laughs> I know I have not been uploading that much lately, but there's so much work with uni. And in about a month, I'll be done with it. I'll be done with the whole uni work. So uh, then I'll keep uploading more frequently. But hey, uh, I, I did find time for this chapter review. So let's check it out. Let's see what happened. Um, First of all, it's chapter uh, 175, uh, Sailing West, I think, part 9. Um, and it was an amazing chapter. I'm not going to lie. I really, really liked it. Um, everything about it felt, felt kind of like farmland-esque. And I'll explain, okay? So... Um, the chapter begins with like a passage of time. We see winter turning to spring, uh, presumably half a year or almost a year passed since the previous chapter. And uh, now we're ready to sail. So it's amazing. Everyone is getting prepared. We see five ships um, which are loaded with things. Um, my, I, I did catch the horse that um, Torfin um, bought. Um, I'm not sure whether there were two horses. There was not a single panel where we got to see all five ships, you know. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two horses. But anyway, um, we see everyone getting prepared. But before we see that, we see Torfin having like a medieval shower i guess so he's just dumping some water on him i guess to wake up i guess to yeah and you can see all of his scars and the drawing is so detailed and so gritty it did remind me a lot of torfin back in when he was a slave back in farmland just the, the detail of the art and, and the greediness of it. And at first I thought, wait, is that Canute? No, it can't be, right? And then when, when Torfin turns around, uh, like you can see his new design, which I absolutely love. It's an amalgamation of pretty much every single style he had. He has, I think, a little bit of a beard. He does have longer hair. He does seem more heart tormented. He 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 does remind me a lot of the 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 uh, hairstyle he had back in Farmland. But there are also elements from like the previous arc and whatever. From these opening um, panels. This chapter really brought some gravitas, you know. So, to open the chapter this way, with a close-up on Torfin, no dialogue, no nothing, okay? That was very, very well-paced, very nice opening. And this chapter really felt focused, like laser-focused to what it wanted to do. And it did it, you know. We... We finally, you know, departed for Vinland. So uh, after that, um, I've been trying to understand what Torfin feels in these opening panels. Some people in the subreddit said that he was feeling angry or fearful 
about the expedition. For me, it felt more like he was dedicated and he was determined to go there. I think, of course, there's a little bit of fear in there, but who knows? Uh, I just love it. So, uh, then we have this uh, thing with like Halvor, he gets a dress or whatever, and he's so thankful, uh, whatever. I have no connection, emotional connection to this character. Okay, sure, nice. So, um, and then we move to the preparations being made in the ships. Um, so, there's, an, uh, there's a very interesting point early on in this like preparation phase where uh, Einar brings this wooden box, right? And he places it in one of the ships. And um, I think there's this sailor guy that we met a couple of chapters back, uh, chapter 173, I believe. And he's like, hey, Einar, what is this, you know? And Einar is like, this is like the goddess and she will protect us and we will bring her to Vinland, something along these lines. So he mentions the goddess and there's the air quotes. And I'm like, what is this, right? This is definitely not a Norse god. I don't think they would bring a Norse goddess, the statue of a Norse goddess. This is definitely not the Christian God, because otherwise it would say, you know, it's God, whatever. And we know Einar is religious, right? So, okay. So what is that? What is the thing in the box? What's in the box? I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Uh, Brad Pitt impersonation. Anyway, uh, so this is what I think. Uh, this is what I think it is. So uh, let's go to my B-roll and check it out. So uh, I uh, decided to take a look in uh, book seven of Inland Saga. This is the uh, uh, Farmland Arc. It's the final kind of like book of Farmland Arc. And I wanted to check something about Arnhide, you know, because Arnhide was this uh, slave woman uh, that uh, Einar had a crush on and she really loved but she unfortunately died. So I was I was wondering, like, maybe it's it's like a memento of her they have in there. And then I found this, okay? So uh, Torfin says, um, across the Great Sea, there is a place called Vinland. And you can see Arnhide is dying in this, in this panel. I think it's chapter 93, 94. And so they're trying to, like, revive her, but I guess it doesn't work. And, and, and Torfin uses the tale or the story that like uh, Taurus would say to the uh, like dying slave in the first chapters. And then uh, see what he says. He says, uh, it is warm and fertile, far from the slave trade and the fires of war. Uh, there you will be able to live without pain. Go there with us, Arnhide. All right. Uh, we'll create a country of peace in Vinland. Go there with us, Arnhide. And I'm thinking there's a very good chance that inside that wooden box, there is either a memento of her or like a small statue carved out of wood or something of Arnhide. Or maybe something even more like personal, like, uh, I don't know, like a. I try to check on her like gravesite, like, some pages after that, there's like a gravesite, and like Einar is so like devastated. And I'm thinking maybe there's something that she left, but I couldn't find anything that she left behind, like a braid of her hair or a, like a bracelet or something. Um, and you know, uh, Einar is like devastated. So I think. For Einar to bring this wooden box in there, it has to have something to do with Arnhide. And maybe it's this fulfillment of the uh, promise they made. Go there with us, Arnhide. And he's brought a part of her into Vinland. And I think this will be really amazing and um, really touching. So, okay, let's get back to the review, I guess. So, um, in a way, this will uh, bring the character 
of Einar full circle, you know, because Einar has not had any character development since the Farman arc. And I think this will actually bring his character to the forefront again. Maybe we can explore his emotions towards Arnheide. So I'm calling it in there. There is a memento of Arnheide. All right. If it happens, that was me. Um, and then what we do have is basically um, we have some of my theories um, being correct. One of my theory was one of my theories was that um, our characters will um, depart for Vinland within this year, within 2020, and they did. And if you ask me, they're gonna reach Vinland pretty quickly. Like I assume there's gonna be what, two, three, four chapter where they are at sea, tops. And then after some chapters we, we land and we begin building, you know. Uh, so, um, and then the second theory, which I had called out like months ago, was that Avar and his tattoo gang will travel to Vinland they're going to bring weapons, and that's what they did in this chapter. They brought weapons. Uh, there wasn't much of a security check, to be honest. Um, but this kind of confused me, because they do have a spear. Like, the, 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 the thin guy, right? Of the three, the, the thinnest of the bunch with the X and the O. He has a spear, supposedly for hunting. That's a weapon right there. And the other guy, the buff guy, not Avar, uh, I think his name was Gin Ginji. I think Avar did uh, call him something during this chapter. Yeah, he has like an axe, a big axe in his back. So that's a weapon. Like just because you have like swords, come on. Anyway, uh, but supposedly they've brought more weapons. And this is where you start to think, okay, is it possible that these settlers are actually divided into two groups? And maybe then Avar, you know, distributes these weapons he's brought to other uh, settlers and he forms like a gang, a proper gang to take down the natives and the settlers and to take over the settlement. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so when I started, like I was scanning those ships to see any, any like little clues that were there. And, um, I did notice some animals. I did not notice a bull for some reason. Maybe the story does not go that way. Who knows? Um, I did notice the two horses. Uh, there were five ships. There were women as well, women and children as well, I think. Uh, which is not how things really played out in the actual uh, expedition to Vinland. There were some women, but not many. And I, I did count quite a few. So we'll see how that will play out. Maybe the settlers will want to protect their women. And that will be a plot point from the natives. Who knows? Um, and now, something that a lot of people forgot and there was a bit of a confusion in the uh, Vinland Saga subreddit. It was, where is uh, Bug Eye Torfin? And where is Leif? Where is Leif Erikson? And a lot of people said, well, they're not going to come, maybe. You know, they were not there. But they forget that uh, four or five chapters ago, we had this little back and forward between um, Torfin and Bug Eye Torfin. And Torfin actually sent these two to Greenland to, to recruit more settlers because these ships were not near 100% capacity. So we're going to have more settlers coming in and perhaps even a couple of more new characters, I believe. There could be some like niece or nephew of Leif that appears in Greenland and comes with us. But I do think we're going to see these two in Greenland. Torfin even mentioned it, that their first stop is Greenland, or he's going to make a lot of trips between Greenland, Iceland, and Vinland. So they're going to go there first, and that's where we're going to meet our guys. Don't worry, there's no way 
like Yukimura forgot about these two. And I don't think there's any way Torfman can sail to Vinland without Leif, really. Um, and I'm 100% sure both of these guys will come. Then we have, okay, we have Carly announcing, let's depart or whatever, and they leave. Um, but th I think there was quite, there was quite a bit of foreshadowing in this chapter. Because like, Torfin said, oh, I plan to make many trips. I'm not going to say goodbye. And I was like, is this foreshadowing that he's not going to make any more trips? This is his last trip, maybe? Or he's going to make one more trip uh, when he returns? Who knows? Now, as for Avar and the gang, they'll probably go there. Um, and uh, Avar does not seem like a, like a, like a straight-up villain. He, he does not seem like a mustache twirling kind of guy. I'm going to go and ruin Vinland. <laughs> no, he's not. He's like, he's the type of guy who, um, who will go there for his own purposes. And when things turn ugly and violent, he's going to do things his way. That, that's why he's brought the weapons. And then we're going to have an ideological clash between Thorfinn and Avar. Um... Yeah, so I I genuinely think we are in a good like path. I absolutely loved this chapter. This chapter felt focused, um, focused around our characters, focused around our protagonist Torfin. There were a lot of silent moments and and, and some really nice page spreads, you know. Um, uh, page spread panels and adventure seems to begin I've been talking about this I've talked about this in the past but I'm gonna reiterate and say it a bit differently this time I've been really thinking about how Yukimura could have made this a, a more interesting arc you know the preparation arc and the more I think about it there really isn't any way to do it better like maybe you could have a skirmish but that would kind of prolong the arc and it wouldn't really add anything, I guess. Or at least you could remove the whole Har Halvor arc and then add something else like a skirmish or a mutiny or a riot in, in, in like Halfden's farm. But really there's nothing else because you need that downtime to like say farewell to the Iceland characters which could have been done in less chapters, arguably. Uh, and then you need to show the preparation. Uh, like the the new characters that are, that are joining um, Avar, you need to kind of set him up before he becomes the villain, right? So, and you also need to show what these settlers are bringing with them, which can be used later on um, as plot devices. Like these horses, maybe there's at some point they will need three horses and they only have two or they only have one, you know. So maybe there, there's a reason they are drawn in the panel, you know. So, yeah, I think, I, I don't know how I could have done it, you know, differently. Um, and of course, you, you cannot have like uh, these settlers leaving uh, Iceland. Uh, while being chased. I don't think you could ever do... Um, uh, I don't think they could begin the trip like hunted down. No, they need to gather up people. Um, this needs to seem like a successful or ambitious trip so that later on, if you choose, you it, it can take a dark path. Now, that being said, listen to me. If... In the next 10 chapters, okay, we don't see any more gravitas. And there is this, you know, uh, funny and silly atmosphere. And the whole Vinland expedition seems like a, like a, uh, like a, like a walk in the park. I'll be the first guy to call it out, okay? But I genuinely believe we're not going to get that. I genuinely believe with the final panels in this chapter, Yukimura 
really set the atmosphere for what's happening. With Torfin looking all serious and all dedicated and all motivated, you know, I think we're moving towards a more serious part of the manga. There was a little bit of a downtime, but oh well. And don't forget that I think in one of his interviews, he has said that this is actually the arc that he, that he always wanted to write. Vinland, the final arc. So now he can finally begin. And this arc, and this chapter was really quick, to the point, we left, bye bye, see you guys, and, and now we can begin the Vinland expedition. Let's go! It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be great. I, 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 this chapter really left a really nice feeling. And uh, what I'm gonna keep is Torfinn's face. A serious, motivated face in the end of the chapter to show that Vinland Saga is back, baby. Yeah, Torfinn doesn't even need weapons. Like, Eivor is gonna pull out the sword and stuff, and and like Torfinn's gonna hit him with the old one, two, one, two. He's gonna do the, the elbow destruction, like bam, bam, bam. He's gonna like pow, 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 pow. Like, he knows hand to hand combat, he doesn't need anything. Like, like, I think, I think we're, we're headed towards a really nice uh, part. I, I can't really remember anything else. I think I covered everything that happened in this chapter. Um, I think the outline for the, uh, for the upcoming chapters is first month of 2021, we have reached Vinland. And then all bets are off. We don't know who's going to live. We don't know who's going to die. We don't know how this expedition is going to turn out. So, who knows, guys? Who knows? Um, I do have other videos to make. And I'm going to make a video like kind of like explaining some stuff. And like, yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I think I'll do a video like for the two years, two year anniversary in this, in this, uh, um, channel eventually so stay tuned for that um, I want to hear your opinions on like um, this chapter what do you think what do you think should happen and um, I don't know did you like it did you enjoy it are you hyped for the next chapter oh by the way there's gonna be a break uh, so there's not gonna be a September chapter it's kind of a bummer, but that being said, let's give the guy some time to like rest. And who knows? Maybe the uh, next chapter will be beefier. We'll be we'll have more stuff. Um, so yeah, I want to hear your opinions. You should see the subreddit, uh, the villain saga subreddit, guys. Like people were commenting on like uh, like Torfin's naked body. You had people. Like going crazy about like uh, tiny, teeny, tiny details. Like, oh my God, you know, Torfin's ear is not cut or whatever. Like, because of when did that happen? Like farmland? I do not remember. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, but in general, I saw a lot of positive comments about this. So, um, I'm so glad to see you again, guys, and. Uh, Leave your comments down below, uh, tell me what you think, and tell me what else do you want me to cover for the uh, fall season that's coming up. Um, so, don't forget to check out my other Vinland Saga videos. I have uh, theory videos, I have uh, video analysis, and character analysis, so check these stuff out, or there, I don't know where it is, here I guess. Um, and I will see you uh, in a few weeks with my next video. Um, and stay tuned, check out my like uh, community tab. I do post some like funny pictures and panels from amazing manga right there. So check it out um, and stay tuned for any future video. Uh, I'm so glad to see you again and well, have an amazing week, my fellow Vikings.